It's been an unusually wet and warm summer so far. It is moist out here. My skin is like flypaper. But that also means the fungi are going wild. You can't walk more than 10 meters without seeing some kind of fungal growth. If you're into some foraging, that could also mean you need a way of storing massive amounts of edible mushrooms for an extended period of time. My preferred way of doing so is by drying them. Not only do the dried fungi not require refrigeration, but they also take up a lot less space. I don't have a dryer, so I'm using a regular ass oven. You should be familiar. Dryers can be nice, but they are a bit touch and go as far as their build quality goes. And unless you're constantly drying shit tons of fruits and fungi, there's really no reason to get one. Drying things in an oven, like this, can be a bit tedious at times, so I'm here to give you the speedrun strats. Anyway, to the point. Cut the mushrooms into thinner slices. They don't need to be paper thin, but the thinner they are, the quicker they will dry out. This will do just fine. Now would also be the time to clean them properly, as that will be a pain in the ass when they're dry. That is, of course, unless you lug your fungi with a side of gravel. Place the sliced fungi on a baking tray lined with some parchment paper. Try keeping the overlapping to a minimum. The temperature should be set to 50 degrees or less. I operate at about 45 degrees. It might be tempting to turn up the heat to speed up the process, but that'll only burn the fungi. They do burn very easily. Turn the fan on if your oven has one. I've never done this without the fan, so I don't know how much longer it would take without it. Now the door shouldn't be fully closed, as good air circulation is crucial when you're drying things. On this oven, I find that the half-open position lets out too much of the heat, so I just prop it open with a wooden spoon. When all that's done, let it bake for three hours. Of course you can leave it in for longer, but for this method, three hours is usually enough. What. The. Fuck. When the three hours are up, turn the oven off, open the door halfway, and let the fungi sit there overnight. The next day, give it another three hours at the same temperature. When those three hours are up, they should be done. If they are done, they should break like crackers. If they don't, you've probably cut the fungi too thick. Give them another three hours and see what happens. Once they are fully dried, store them in airtight containers. Just make sure they're clean, as you don't want any contaminants in there. I use mason jars, because I'm not like other girls, but any airtight container will do. I don't know exactly how long of a shelf life these things have, but if they're stored in a dark place, they'll last for at least a year. When you want to use these dried fungi, let them soak in cold water for 40 minutes to an hour. When you then fry them up, it'll be almost as if they were picked the same day. This method may not be as straightforward as some others, but it is better if you don't have the time to babysit kitchen appliances for hours on end, or if you just don't want to blast your furnace and listen to that fucking fan for 12 plus hours in one go. It's more like an assisted air drying, but it works, it's energy efficient, and you can sleep through most of it. Although drying is probably the best way to preserve mushrooms in the long term, not all types of fungi can be preserved that way. Drying is primarily reserved for the Ajarix, like the Cantharella siberia seen in this video, Craterellus tubiformis, or the Pleurotus ostriatus oyster mushrooms. Puffballs and bolets generally don't take very kindly to being dried, 